Hello everyone. We're coming down the stretch with our study on Will Willimon's Why Jesus. And this week we look at chapters 9 and 10. Chapter 9 has us examining Jesus as sovereign. And then chapter 10 uh, has us look at Jesus as lover. Now, sovereign is not a word that we typically use anymore in our culture, at least in relationship to people. So we don't think of calling someone sovereign. Uh, sometimes we talk of sovereign nations or the sovereignty of states. But here we're asked to look at Jesus, this, this one person and this person that we come to know as the Son of God, as being sovereign, as being uh, the one that rules over our lives. And so Willimon asks us to think about what does it mean for Jesus to truly be sovereign. And he says that in the telling of the stories of Jesus' ministry and even of Jesus' death and resurrection, that from the very beginning all the way through, it seems as if we are being welcomed into relationship with someone who demands that we join in the mission of the kingdom of God. And so when he says that Jesus is sovereign, he really means that Jesus is uh, the one that comes to bring the kingdom here to us now. And um, that in many ways that we are to understand through Jesus, and the church came to understand as well that Jesus actually redefines a lot of our notions of what power is, and even redefines our notion of the kingdom and its timing. In other words, we're not supposed to be people that think that, oh, someday the things of God will begin or come, but that actually in Jesus, the kingdom is initiated, that something happens and that there's this new way of being and living and understanding that God is at work in our lives and the lives of others and the world around us that has already been initiated, that we live in kingdom time, that we live under the reign of God. And so that's what he means that Jesus is sovereign. He wants us to really think about what does it mean to think that Jesus truly does rule over our lives. What would it mean for Jesus' love to rule over our lives and the ways we interact with one another? What might it even look like for us to put our trust in that kind of power as opposed to the powers of this world that we often choose to put our trust in, whether it be political, governmental, um, other things about our lives, uh, economic, things like that? Uh, how does Jesus' reign challenge all of those powers and re help us reimagine those powers that we submit our lives to. So that's what that's what Willimon will have you exploring, thinking about Jesus as sovereign. Uh, it's just related to kingdom language. And then in the second chapter we're going to look at today, chapter 10, where Jesus is seen as lover, it's kind of a strange term that we're used to, to thinking about more in terms of romantic love. But here he wants us to remember that Jesus also uh, came to demonstrate divine love and that Jesus demonstrates that divine love even unto death on a cross. And Willimon is really careful to help us see Jesus in two ways, both to understand that Jesus' ministry and death and resurrection are supposed to have impact that is big impact that is cosmic, impact that shares God's love to the world, but that also that Jesus was human as well, and that, that many of the passion narratives describe the very human plight that Jesus went through on his way to the cross. And uh, Willimon stresses that side of Jesus as well in this chapter, and helps us think about the fact that Jesus was determined to follow the will of God, was determined to, to follow the path of the kingdom, and that even if that meant it was going to lead to death, Jesus did that. And so that Jesus demonstrated a suffering love, an obedient love, a love rooted in what God calls us to be when we live into the fullness of our humanity. And Willimon also helps us think a bit about um, 
our theology or our godly understanding of what happens on the cross and what it is that how it is that the cross relates to our faith he challenges us to think about it more in terms of what humanity is up to in the story than what god maybe is up to and what i mean by that is what what he says that god is up to is primarily trying to come to people that the story of jesus's uh, ministry and then his death and his resurrection is the story of God trying to come to people to be with us, but that really what happens in the passion story it's not a story about God's wrathful vengeance uh, and having to kill Jesus to take care of sin, as is so often talked about. But Willimon challenges us to think about it more as this is what happens when God's love is made known that we kill it. <laughs> and so that actually uh, the result of uh, what happens on the cross is not so much that God wills that Jesus should die, but that Jesus in following God's kingdom ways and following the will of God and living fully into his divine nature combined with his human form leads to the result of being killed. So he ends up being crucified. And so the crucifixion is actually uh, gives us an image of what it looks like when people rely on their own powers instead of the power and promise of God. So that's where Willimon asks us to explore Jesus as lover of the world and lover of us, as one who dis do, who demonstrates divine love through this uh, sacrificial way of life, but not sacrificial necessarily in the sense of an offering, but sacrificial in the sense that that uh, he lives fully into that call into which he knows that God is calling uh, all of uh, humanity to live. So good luck discussing these. These are two deep chapters, and I hope you have some good discussions today.